Okay, hi fiddlers. We are going to go over everything that we did on our first day. Um, from the bow hold to how to hold the violin and just review everything and then you can see up and close what I'm doing with my bow grip. And I might add a couple little explanations because um, sometimes in class I, I go quickly on the first day. So just stick with me, stick with the class. The first day is always insane. <laughs> I hope you had fun, but it gets more fun each week because you start to figure it out and then it starts to sound better. So let's go ahead and start with the bow holds. So my favorite way to set up a bow hold is just, it's, your, it's really this, your dead hand here. Um, if I just am completely relaxed, you can see the spaces in between my fingers here. And then the, th the thumb is bent as well, just very naturally. Um, it doesn't feel good when you hold your bow at first. And whenever I put my bow into my wrong, my left hand, I feel all of the awkwardness. So I, I totally get what's going on. <laughs> but eventually it just feels totally normal. So you want to make sure your hold is as relaxed as possible. Um, if, you, if you get something that looks like this, you know, you're going to get a sound that is very scratchy and harsh. So you want to be loose here. So I'm just going to go ahead and place my fingers in the most relaxed way on top. So the important thing for fiddle is that you have this beautiful curve here on your pinky and your pinky is right up on the fingernail. And then you can see I have a little space here. Don't put your pinky on the screw. I mean, it seems like it goes on the screw down here, but it really doesn't. My middle two fingers come over the frog, so they're not up here. If they're up too high, that means you're really trying to help the pinky balance the bow. And the pinky um, is the smallest finger and it has the hardest job. So when I take my pinky off, it's, it's hard to balance my bow. So these little pinky push-ups are really good for strengthening this joint. Um, and you want to make sure your pinky doesn't flatten out or straighten or fall off. For cellos, it's this. It's straight on. These two fingers are over. But for violins, we pronate to the index finger. Um, then I have, so you've got your curved pinky, then you have a little space here. I say about, it, it's a bigger space than in between the, the middle two fingers, so it's a little more, you can kind of see, and you can move that up and down. The higher you have it, the um, more the power you're going to have in your tone, and so sometimes you have too much power, so you just throttle that back down. And this would be, if you're like this, this is pretty loose. So find something in the middle. Okay, now this is the important part. And I get it, this part totally sucks when you start. It's your thumb here is this shape, not like that. It's not like a banana. So you wanna bend that thumb into the hair and for a long time, I used to put my thumb inside here, but it's much more comfortable for me now that I've moved my thumb to this little rubber piece, which is actually where your thumb's supposed to go. But do, do what you want. So this is what I have for my hold. And windshield wipers, if you do anything this week, windshield wipers. And see if you can get your pinky to not fall off like that. So we're just holding the bow. Also make sure you don't hook your first finger around like this. That's kind of a death grip and that's another reason that people squeak. We're going to squeak. <laughs> we're going to squeak at first. And, uh, but each week we're going to squeak less. I sometimes still squeak like once a, once a concert, but I'm pretty good at hiding it, <laughs> covering it up. Okay. So yeah, you have, you have your grip. It should be nice and loose. Now, when you bow, when you do your bow, um, I'm going to back up. So, when you do your bow, no one in class was doing this. So, you don't want to 
do your just from your elbow because your bow is going to go really crooked. Um, you want to make this is a shoulder. You don't want to do it from just your shoulder. You want to make sure you're moving your elbow and getting that going. And then also notice that you have a wrist. That wrist really helps smooth things out. So when you're first starting, it's good just to pick a string, any string, and just try to make sure that your bow is going straight and not this is even worse. If that tip goes behind your head, you're going to get a slipping sound, even if it goes a little bit behind your head. So this right here, not so good. So you want a straight bow, or you can point a little bit the other way where the tip is going towards the scroll. So. That's okay. Um, you're going to try for straight bows. So make sure you practice in front of the mirror. Um, and, you know, just doing long bows is really hard, <laughs> but we can do hard things, right? So it's really hard to do a long bow and have it sound good because we have to calibrate the bow and the, t the pressure of the bow at each point. So down here, our hand is really heavy. So we have to be really gentle. As you move towards the tip, you have to press more. And I use this finger to press my stick into the string, okay? So when I come back towards the frog, my wrist, I raise my wrist up so I have this little thing, I think of it as, this is what my cat does all the time. Um, my hand looks really weird in this video. The angle is like, huge hand. Um, so anyway, you have this wrist come up, and then when I do a down bow, I'm pushing my wrist down. Okay, so practice long bows in the mirror, super fun. It's very meditative. I used to do those for like half an hour a day. When I was in um, college, I was in music school and I would just play open A's. And then I felt like my bowing, it felt like my bow was just an extension of my hand. It felt so good. Um, but now I do not do that anymore. I don't have time to do 30 minutes of open A string. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. Okay, let's do the left hand. So the left hand, you're going to slide your thumb all the way down where the nut is. That's that little ridge that's holding up your strings. So you're going to put your thumb back, way back here. And you want to imagine there's a little troll living right, that lives right here under the neck of your violin. Don't squish your troll. Okay, that brings your hand, your, <laughs> my hand's so big, um, it brings your fingers way off the fingerboard, so we want to drop it down, and our head is holding our violin 75%, so it's 75% head, and then we have the base of your index finger and your thumb for the other 25%. Now, this is important as well. See how my pinky's far away? So, when, eventually, we're going to play that with that finger, so let's get our wrist rotated around. So then your thumb comes on the side. So instead of being straight on, it, it's flexible like a fulcrum. And I rotate my hand around so my fingers are floating like little clouds over the fingerboard. Super exciting. Okay. <laughs> um, and so they're, they're all ready to go. My elbow's just hanging down. So when I'm on the strings that are lower, like the G. Um, sometimes I have to bring my elbow under a little bit and I feel the stretch in the back of my arm. But E string is here, A, D, G. And you'll just naturally do it. Just make sure you're not adding any extra tension. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the part where we, oh, one more thing. Make sure you don't squish your cupcake. So you have, excuse me, you have a big cupcake sitting here um, 
and you do not want to squish it like this, you will see, <laughs> you'll see fiddle players play this, play this way. But then when you go to play the high notes, you have to completely change your, your hand position. So fiddle players just get stuck down in this position and then they can't play out, outside of this position. And so I'm teaching you a way where you have all the possibilities, whatever you wanna do with this. If you love the violin and you just wanna practice 10 hours a day and become a virtuoso, then you wanna have this wrist and you'll have all the possibilities and be able to shift up here and play notes. So much fun to shift. So anyway, don't squish your cupcake. Wrist is straight or a little bit back like this. Not like that, but just like this. Fingers are around. Don't do that. Okay. Oh, this is really helpful. E, A, D, G. Cellos, it's, I have a cello here, but I don't think it's in tune. Cello is A, D, G, C. Take a pencil and just lightly on your bridge, write the string names so that you can just look down and see them. Um, super helpful. That's something that, you know, you can just erase that when you're ready to um, trade your violin in or, you know, if you have to return it. So just lightly put the names. E E's the high, then A, D, G. Okay. So the boiled and cabbage, we're just doing the first half. So I've got my bow on the string. And instead of doing long bows, start in the middle because you're gonna squeak less. And a lot of fiddle tunes are just played in the middle of the bow because you know they're fast. So we can't use a lot of bow, otherwise it starts to sound crazy. Um, so we, we actually use pretty short bows when we're playing fast. So let's imagine that we're gonna play fast soon and we will. Um, and we're going to put two fingers on the A string. For cellos, it's three fingers. Here we go. Stop, set, three. Stop, set, two. Stop, set, one. Okay, that's as far as we went in class. So leave your fingers down. If, you, if I say two, that means second finger, but it also means leave two fingers down for now, okay? You can lift up, but in this tune, you wanna just have your fingers down, okay? So we'll talk more about leaving fingers down later. And sometimes we, we wanna do it, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Okay, so here we go. Stop, set. Three, stop, set, two, stop, set, one. Okay, let's try it without stops now. One, two, ready, play. And if you want to do a fast one just for fun, I'll do a fast one. One, two, three, four. That's pretty hard to do in a week, but you know, if you practice, you can do it. You'll be able to do it. Um, yeah, that's that's all we did. That's that's the first part of boil them cabbage. So next week we're going to play the whole thing and I'm going to teach you how to do shuffle bows. So that it sounds more fiddly. Okay? So we'll it will sound more fiddly when we add double stops. And then when we speed it up. And when we do a slide in. So we have all these fun little things that um, we can add eventually. I love boil and cabbage because it's all on one string. We don't have to cross strings yet, so it's a great beginner tune. Okay, if you have any problems, any questions, anything that comes up, just send me an email because you are in Drunken Fiddles for the next 
six or seven weeks and I am here to help you. So just let me know and um, have fun practicing. Okay.